What's going on everybody? This is actually the third time I've had to do this video because I had to pause because I had PSA calling and I've been in their queue now twice today and each time I go to get the call back and say hello, it hangs up so there's something up with their phone systems. I, I have no idea. Maybe it's my phone system, but I'm about to give up on the callback thing today. <laughs> and then I lost track of where I was at in my video, so... We're going to start it brand new here, brand new here. So yesterday we talked about 10,000 Club. Um, there's actually a new 20,000 Club member that wasn't even on the list, but I'll hit that up in the uh, next video, next video for sure. We're going to hit the overall numbers by these grading companies over the uh, month of March of 2022. All this information is compiled by Gemrate.com. It's really interesting to see this stuff because you start – when you start tracking the stuff, just not by, you know, for this month or, you know, last two months, if you've been tracking this stuff for like the past year, you could tell the companies that are growing versus the companies who are doing nothing out there. And there are some companies out there that still don't have their data. There's some that run an Excel spreadsheet looking thing on their website, and it's not updated. And there's gaps in between their numbers on there so there's never a real accurate count what was being graded the half of them you don't even hear about it shows no more now i will tell you hj is not on this list by gem rate i'm not too sure why offhand um and i'll touch with hga here shortly because i know there's a lot of people that still strongly like hga and some of these other companies that did not make the top four off of gemrate.com but you have to remember, if you've been around for a while, this has happened twice before I could think of. So this is number three. To where all these grading companies come out there, new ones, because they see, you know, money. Money, money, money. Um, but they fizzle out. And that's why we had Fairfield Facts with all kind of weird labels of uh, graded cards and stuff like that out there. For I think it's still happening, matter of fact. Um, the only thing that helped these guys was because the top four did get backlogged at one point in time. Some caught up very quickly. Some still chipping away. Some are way, 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 way behind. Um, and they were able to prosper for that time period, but they fizzled out completely. But let me pull this up. But before I pull it up, I want you to think, how many cars do you think PSA graded, STC graded, Beckett, and CSG? Those are the four. These are going to be highlighted by gemrate.com. And we'll talk a little bit about it and a little bit of my in, my thoughts of what I see going on as well, too. And I may double tap some of the information because I can't remember if I talked about it in the first two videos. So if I double tap, I do apologize. Boom. There we go. Just look at those numbers. That's huge. Between them all, you're talking like, what is that? Almost 1.2 million, roughly, somewhere around there, maybe. PSA, almost a million cards. I mean, if I could was tech enough, I would have some kind of clapping noise going on for PSA right now. That's a huge number. They've really expanded. They're adding more. They got that thing going on in New Jersey. It should be up, but I think, in what, another year, year and a half, something like that. SGC, big numbers. You got over 100,000 graded for a smaller. And I want to say smaller company by meaning that they're like small time in the grading process. It just means that they have a smaller amount of employees doing the work down there than like PSA or Beckett should have, stuff like that there. But those numbers are huge. Again, if I had a clap of noise down here, I would give it to you um, because you deserve it as well, too. Those are two impressive numbers overall for those two companies because they've expanded. Um, they've added more graders to the process. It just looks good overall. Now, if you're not into grading and stuff like that, so I understand some people like their raw cards and they just leave it at that. A lot of people were using these companies to flip. Some people belong to the PSA set registry and so on. But when you look at this, they're still trucking away pretty big on cards. Now, Beckett did go up 20%, but I'm also thinking a lot of this, I don't know if it's their raw card reviews they're doing at shows. 
And you, if you really look, Beckett still at shows, doing their rock card reviews, doing their, uh, oh, you want to pay us like 250 and take in orders and everything like that. I do know they brought back one or two of their services too, but they're still far from being caught up from what I read. Um, but yet they're still taking more in. I, I just don't know. I pretty much wash my hands of Beckett unless I get a super thick stock card in and I need graded. And then I'm just going to pay the... If it's going to be worth some money, I'm going to pay the fast route to get it back. But, wow. They're still not just producing like they should. I mean, with the expansion and everything else going on. CSG, this is the first month they're reporting. 59000 That's pretty good for some one of the newer companies out there. But they also fall underneath the umbrella where they've done... Uh, I think they fall underneath the coin company, the comic book company I do know, and stuff like that. So there is some experience with how to run all that stuff. But that's pretty good, though, because now there's actually something out there showing what CSG's producing per month. And we'll see how those numbers stick overall each and every month now going forward. Um, PSA, I still don't believe, is working on weekends anymore because all the message boards and private group chats I belong to, I don't see any changes posted for Saturdays or Sundays anymore. I think the last ones I usually catch are... Easter time around 2 in the morning, which would put it like 11 p.m. on Friday. So they might have still have their overtime shift on Friday, and then they cut everybody home for the weekends. Which, you know, at no fault was it those workers that came in should be working seven days a week to catch up on a backlog that was mostly done by us as either collectors, flippers, whatever you want to call it. But people in the card industry in some format just sent everything in to them. You know, they do deserve some time off down there. They're putting up some big numbers. We're going to see how April unfolds because I've noticed the PSA numbers were, or the updates were not going on weekends about a little over halfway through the month. Uh, I'm really curious to see how that means April's numbers are going to be and how much it, it will either drop, stay the same. You know, I, I have a prediction that it's going to drop a little bit. And I also I know a lot of people keep asking. When do I see bulk coming back? I don't think they're going to announce until either at the national or right after the national. But very good numbers overall for the uh, top two companies. We're going to say PSA and SGC. Big increases. Um, they're pushing through. They're still doing their thing. The other thing I just want to hit real quick, I really think, though, by the end of the year, right here, SGC's values are going to creep up somewhat. And I think because of Beckett's lackluster performance over the last two years, their stuff is going to uh, decrease some. Somewhat. Not a whole lot. I still think tens and black labels will be up there. But I think overall we'll start seeing this gap between SGC and Beckett. Very, very closing the gap, we'll just say, on to it with the way things are going. I could be wrong. That's just my prediction overall. Pokemon or TCG, the biggest thing out there, biggest increase. I know this is smaller because the way they have their slides on to here and stuff. Um, but this just gives you an idea on this stuff there. This goes in by the decades. They're grading errors. Just really big. On to some stuff. The gem rate breakdown, which is not, I know where I stopped my other video at. Well, at least one of them. Um, when you start looking at the big numbers here, PSA doesn't have a 9.5. Understand why they can't just hurry up and switch to it because then tens would be all different ways. People would be arguing about them. But uh, Beckett, that gem rate for them is a 9.5 or a 10. So as you can see there, SGC, then CSG. And from what I've seen, CSGs have some hard grades out there. Some really, really hard grades. I haven't seen many CSG 10s. But I guess they're starting to adopt a new label from what I've seen. And I think they're doing something like Beckett, where how Beckett and SGC have like the gold and black label. I think CSG is doing something similar too. I'll have to do some more research on it, and then I'll try to get a video out on that piece. And that's just a recap right there of what they're talking about onto it. And yes, that is uh, Emmy Lou who just wanted to come in here and meow real loud. I do apologize for that. She has no manners whatsoever. 
Ah, here we go. Check this out. This is what I was looking for. PSA's most graded players and subjects. We now have a subject. That subject is Charizard, the most graded card of March 2022. And that'll lead into tomorrow's video of why we have a new 20,000 Club card member, along with Pikachu and Mew. So kind of cool to see three big Pokemons up there right off the bat. I mean, Charizard overshadowed Michael Jordan. How many times do you think you're ever going to say is who's better than Michael Jordan in anything? Charizard in grading in March 2022. People graded more of him than Michael Jordan. I mean, people graded more Pikachu than LeBron James. Kind of crazy, though. All right. And these are the actual cards. And I'll just give you a clue. This is tomorrow's video right here because I had to look at this. But if everybody remembers Champions Path, the promo card, Charizard, top card. Uh, and th this is kind of interesting here, what they talk about, what's next for PSA, how they did with their numbers, and do they really want to grade 15 million cards in a given 12-month period? That's huge. I mean, even try to do that. That that's over a million, yeah, it's over a million cards a month. I'm like, wait a minute, I was trying to figure it out where it was actually. I think it's like one point four, roughly, uh, a month. That would be huge. I don't think they would be able to sustain that without trying to throw us a bunch of specials out there to get that kind of volume. Uh. I was hoping they were going to touch about the new building here. They didn't. It's coming up. But another, like I says here, record high for SGC. Both fueled by baseball, non-sport miscellaneous card growth, which is a lot of your marble cards that people were sending in and stuff like that there. But really, really cool stuff onto here. I'll put this link in the description in case anybody wants to look through it, for, through it because I don't want to make this into like a – uh, 20, 25 minute video just talking on this stuff. The numbers are really good to look at because you start seeing overall like how much a company is growing. Now, PSA was going like seven days straight. And there, it looks like, like I said, I think they cut out the weekends now. So it'll be quite interesting to see where they'll set into next onto that. But really good information. And I, I applaud Gemrate for putting all this data together because it's just insane to do that. All right, everybody, you guys have a good rest of the week. Overtime, live tomorrow night. Jacob from the Monster Den will be on with me and Joey, and we will be hitting some stuff. I'll probably talk a little bit about whatnot since he's a, uh, new onto there. If you guys got breaking questions and stuff like that, because he is more fluent in breaking than I am anymore because I've pretty much walked away from the breaking side of everything. Um, he'll be in there. We should make some good, fun conversation tomorrow night as well, too. Probably about an hour, hour and a half uh, for overtime tomorrow night. All right, guys, take care. Have a good one. Catch you all hopefully on overtime tomorrow night.